So how much ceiling height you need is probably the most common question we get, but also the most subjective. While I'd love to be able to answer the question for you on the phone and immediately tell you, you need X, I just simply can't because it really depends on the car below, the car above it, what you're working for ceiling height, is your garage door in the way? There's a lot of factors we wanna look into, so I wanna talk through it here with you. First thing we need to think about, we have to factor in what our bottom and the top car are going to be. So we need to look at the heights of those vehicles. Now I know this can vary and you have a number of different vehicles that will go on or under, but to get a general baseline understanding, we need to look at a couple of the vehicles you're working with, generally speaking, the ones that'll be on the lift most often. The biggest area that customers get confused with, and I wanna explain this to you here, is the height below the lift. So on our four post lift, as you can see on the post behind me, we have different lock notch positions. They're spaced every five and a half inches and the chart here on this page will help explain that to you. It'll show you what the clearance below that deck is going to be. So there's different lock position heights. For example, we have one at 50 inches. So if you have a car that is 49 inches, when this is sitting at 50, the 49 inch car will fit under there. However, you can't calculate your height at 49 Instead, you have to calculate it at 50 inches because that's where the bottom of the runway is going to be. In that particular case, we then need to calculate the thickness of our runways, which is about four and a half inches thick. And then it takes on a four post lift about two and a half inches to raise it up, to hold your lock handles open so that you can disengage and lower down. So that's another seven inches. Again, four and a half inches for the runway, two and a half inches to raise it up to disengage on the lock and lower. So in the scenario we were just looking at, the 49 inch car, really counts as 50 because that's the bottom clearance under the runway plus four and a half inches and two and a half inches so right now the bottom of the top car's tires would be calculated at 57 inches we then need to calculate the top car let's say that car is 50 inches for easy math we would then have 57 plus 50 so 107 inches let's assume that you had a 110 inches of ceiling height that scenario would work now let's look at a scenario where you have a little bit higher car. You need to then calculate the bottom height and the top height while factoring in the thickness of the runway and removing it from the locks itself. So you can understand why it's a great question, but it's highly subjective and we can't simply provide you with an answer over the phone. We need the details. And we're happy if you want to call us and talk through it. We just need to get the details of the bottom car, the top car, and the exact height for the ceiling you have to then backtrack in and determine if the ceiling height you have. Now, many of you already know that your ceiling height's going to work. Some of you are questioning it. If you are, go through the calculations on this page or get the measurements of the top car, the bottom car, and your ceiling height and give us a call and we can walk through that. But again, fantastic question. We love getting asked the question. We just can't answer it without those details. So hopefully this helps. And if you do call us, make sure you have those measurements.